Hello guys, this is Just One Guy and this is my tutorial series, Unity for Noobs. Now one of my subscribers asked me to extend my online tutorial. And I think his name was Rise Does Let's Plays. I'm not for sure if I'm pronouncing that right. Sorry if I pronounced it wrong. But uh, this, this is what he asked me to do. Now, I've got most of the things in, but I've left out this over here because I'm not really for sure what this was. And I don't really know what a ping is. I'm... I kind of know, but I'm not really for sure 100%. Now also, I left the, uh, the the type out. Now, it can display which type of match it is, but I haven't put the functionality behind it. And the reason for that is, uh, I don't know what specific in your game, like what type of what type of matches you would have, and that will go to a whole nother video of setting up the types and everything. So right now, I've just set it up in the future where it, it could display it, but I haven't put the functionality behind it yet. But I have, uh, it does tell you how many players, and a map name and you can choose the scene which you load in and the server name and all that other stuff now let's get to it uh, here's an example as you can see this is uh, still the same host game joy game and play online but when you hit host game now it has the uh, the name of the lobby I mean it still has the name of the lobby the server you uh, you want to make and then it has the password and then it has the scene that you can load into now I've only set up two scenes because I was kind of lazy but uh, that's the scenes you can load into. Now we're going to name our lobby Quarry. I messed it all up. And then we're going to choose scene one. And we're going to hit confirm. And you can see it loads up. Now this right here is because I loaded to uh, the same scene that I'm loading from. I just, uh, it's set up as scene one. And I loaded, I created, I mean I've loaded from scene one to another scene one. Because I was kind of lazy and I didn't feel like putting more scenes. But you won't have that problem unless you, you do the same thing. Which you would never want to do. Because if you had different maps, one would be like... Your, uh, your load screen would be scene 1 and the rest of your maps would be like scene 2, 3, or 4, or 5. But uh, let's just turn that off and get rid of it for right now. Here we go. Pause this. Now I've already built the other game, and we're gonna hit play. <coughs> now you can see this is the same, but when I hit join game, you can see it's quite different. It has the name of the uh, the server, the amount of players in the server, which is one because we just loaded it in, and then it has the scene, which is scene one, or basically the map, and it has uh, scene one you would probably name it something different but whatever and then it has the match which is type uh, deathmatch now right now this doesn't uh, correspond to every anything I've just set it up so it can display but it's just showing you that it can transfer information to the clients too and then it has the join button now if you have multiple servers it would list it all the way down here still it's just I set it up a little bit different and we hit join oh yeah see I was working on the AI and I, I left the AI on. It's kind of messing up the online a little bit. That uh, That's another tutorial I'm working on. But as you can see, I can shoot him. He can shoot me, both our hells work right and everything. Now I've set it up to where I kill him, he just uh, respawns at a random point. Now that I set it up so it would be more like a first person shooter. Where if you shoot somebody, they, they don't go to the same point. They go to a random point. And you can see I also changed around the bullets too. I made them a little faster, a little smaller. Which is why I had to put the trail render on it. I haven't found the material for it to actually do it. But the reason I put the trail render on it is so you can see the bullet coming. Instead of just seeing it getting hit by an invisible object. Because they're moving kind of fast now. And that's basically it. Now let's get to the scripts. Ooh. Ooh, that was messed up. Uh, here's a problem. Hold up. Uh, messed up a little bit for a minute. Hit. Okay, there we go. Now let's get to the scripts. Our first one is the networking script. It's basically the same. I changed around a lot of stuff though because uh, 
I've just been messing with the characters. I'm now using the Unity 5 Rigid Body Controller. <coughs> and I think I changed around a lot of stuff here. But it's, it's basically the same premise. Okay, for one, I've added the spawn points. Now, the spawn points is the uh, for the random system where you respawn. It now, uh, it now allows you to put a bunch of spawn points into this and respawn around a level. More like a first person shooter. Then we have the level to load. That's uh, that's all the levels in the game that you want to load. All the scenes in the game that you want to load into. And map choose. I, I set up the uh, the levels to work on a string instead of an int. Like it doesn't work by a number. So you have to uh, name each one of your levels. And then put uh, and then put the uh, the name in the, uh, the array. And then it, it goes through the array. And one equals the map choose. Whichever one you click. And then this is the map type. Later on, when I go into another tutorial on how to do, I mean, how to set up the map types, this will become more important. But right now, it's just used to show that we can display the map types. Uh, let's see what else we have here. We have the respawn timer. And I don't think this is, uh, I use this now, but later on, I'm going to use this to set up like a buffer. When you die, you don't want the person to come straight back. You want them to do a countdown, and then you want them to come back. And that's what we're going to use that for. But I have to set that up later. Let's see what else we got here. Uh, all the rest of this. I'm going to just skip this over because all the rest of this I went over in my uh, first online video. And I don't want this video to be too long. Okay, here's where I added the new stuff. Basically, this just allows you to choose a scene and load into the scene. And it just circles through the uh, levels to load and then creates a button for each one of them. And the one you click is the one that equals choose map and then it loads it in. And uh, hold up. I think I changed. Okay. This right here. This is the function that allows you to load in the. Uh, is it? Yeah, I, I believe it's right here. The game info and. Uh, the, the uh, number amount of players and the level and everything that's how the, that's how the uh, the game is telling it and I think that's it for everything I changed I've added this uh, respawn player too and when it respawns I was having some trouble with fitting it into my health bar and collision damage system so I've added this when it respawns it basically deparents the health UI and I'll go over that when we get to the is it player online. No, the health bar is in the health bar. Okay, and the player online controller. Since I'm using the Unity 5 rigid body first person controller, I had to add this to it. And this basically just gets that first person controller. And then we have the camera. Now I set the camera up so it automatically finds the camera as long as it's a child of the first person controller. And so you, you won't have to enter this anymore it'll just find it uh, naturally and then we have the level level start points okay this is the spawn points for the level now you put all your spawn points in here now you have to uh, tag them respawn I use respawn because it comes as a part of the engine it's already defined you don't have to define it you just have to mark like empty game objects as the spawn points and then put them in this uh, array right here and basically well you don't even have to put them in the array matter of fact it's gonna find them and then it's gonna put them in the array and then it go this function right here it, it loops through the array and then it finds which one equals the random amount which is right here it chooses a random number just so you can spawn that and whatever number that equals that's where it spawns the player and uh, what else we got here we have to don't destroy and load just so when we're loading the different scenes it doesn't automatically destroy the uh, player And then we set pick number to false right here. The reason I have this right here is because when it loops through, it when it loops through in the uh, on level function, it'll actually do it a couple of times, and we don't want that. We only want it to do it one time. We don't want the random number to keep going on and on and on because you'll get the you'll get the same number a high amount of times because it's going through it so many times. So this just stops it from doing that. And right here we set it false just in case we want to load it to another level. And then right here, it's the same as before. We just uh, have this differentiating whether we're uh, whether it's our player or another player. 
and as long as it's our player it, it won't do anything but the other players that uh, we're not it'll actually cut it off just so we can't control their players or uh, we won't get any errors with the audio listener or the camera or the mouse look or anything it just makes sure you only control it at your character and I went over this before in my older video but I've added some some new stuff in here a little bit of new stuff and finally we have the health bar I think the health bar is what I changed the most because I was having trouble with it let's see uh, we just added this on level uh, was loaded and when the level is loaded it gets the manager and then it uh, sets the health bar UI to deparent parent from the uh, first person object now it's important to note that for some reason this does not call on a client it only calls on a server and I don't know why but that's the way it works so we had to also set up the same thing in the, uh, the start function and just in case that it's not our player that I mean uh, that it's not our player that we control and we just destroy the UI completely and that just helps clean up so you don't get it like an infinite loop where you have uh, the UI element just hanging around and it multiplies multiple times to slow down the game and this just depairs the health is if it's the client we had to do in the start function since it wasn't calling on a on level load function and then it finds the manager and this is the same as before then we have a just current health only change one thing here uh, if we're online, it sends the uh, an RPC to the to the other character to let it know to change the health bar length. This just changes the visual health bar, and that's it. And then we have down here the function, which just says health bar length equals health health bar the amount we put in. And we have the uh, the kill the player online. This basically just respawns the player and then uh, destroys it as a network object. And then we have the uh, function of deep parent health. That's the one that was called over here in a networking one when we respawn a player. And that's just because I was getting errors, so I had to put it in the other script instead of this one. And that's it for the scripts. Now the setup. In the game manager, I believe. We have the levels to load. Now I've only set up two levels to load, but you can set up an infinite amount, and this is where you will put them and you just control the size and you drag the uh the scene over here i believe let me see because it's strings i'm not for sure if it's a scene or not oh no that's what i did you put the name of your scene in here just copy the name and put it right here and then it'll go through and it'll find it and load it now you must remember that you also have to uh put it in the build function Ooh. Uh, I messed up a little bit there but you also have to go here and put it in the build because if it's not in the build it's not going to be able to find the scene see right here you have to put the scenes in here too and just go to the game manager uh, it was frozen a little bit there and you put the name of the scenes here and that's how it finds it to load it and then we have the match type which we'll be going over in later tutorials and spawn point this is the spawn point I don't believe we're using this anymore I believe I switched it uh, ah here we go the spawn points yeah all you have to do is put a bunch of spawn points in your scene and then just tag them as respawn and that's it and it'll spawn the level Let's see what else I was going over I think that's it Make sure there's no other setup. Yeah, I set up the first person controller a little bit differently now. I have the rigid body first person controller, a rigid body uh, capsule collider, and a player online script, and then the network script, and then the health bar script, and a save data script for my other tutorials. And I'm just using a different form of it and it's just a different form of how you want to do it now another important thing is I should have went over this in the other videos but I've also changed the bullet and the reason I've done this I'll be posting the new bullet controller too I've just changed it around a little bit I've sped it up for one 
this bullet speed should be at least, uh, at least 12 or something like that just so it'll look more realistic what I've also done is put a box color wait was it no uh, the trail renderer and the rigid body now the reason I've done this is beca because before the bullets can go through walls and we don't want that we want the bullets to stop when they hit the wall so I've just upgraded the bullet you know you should add the rigid body and the trail renderer and make the bullet a little smaller to be more realistic and I'll post a new bullet controller too and that's basically it and if you like this video please like and subscribe and if you want to suggest a tutorial please suggest a tutorial in the comments down below thank you for watching